all of you and i welcome you all to the hindu newspaper analysis discussion today is 26th of october and now let's start with the video however i would like to tell you that you can download explainer notes of this session from our telegram channel link for telegram is given in description box in youtube so you can visit telegram and can download pdf notes of this particular session now first of all let's take overview of entire newspaper so that we can understand that which articles are important for exam in today's paper and uh, here we have delhi edition so let's skim through the newspaper so first article that we have israel steps up attack gaza denied water feud so since 7th of october as hamas made the strikes on israel since then the counter offensive attack has got started and death toll has increased rapidly since then okay uh, so uh, this is about it however for exam point of view you are not really required to track it every day okay relevant developments whatever will be there will be covered in editorial section as this will proceed a month after suspension india partially resumes visa service for canadians in this particular direction yesterday we have seen one article also where we have taken that how india and canada people to people ties are so deep that according to census of 2021 of canada 5% of population of canada is made up of indian people people of indian origin in this capacity this will bring a kind of a respite okay then further after that ncert panel suggest replacing india with bharat in textbooks so recently we have seen this particular development that during g20 invites that were sent these invites bear name of bharat rather than india and now we see that even in textbooks a high level committee has been uh, set up by ncert that is national council of education and research and training and this high level committee had suggested that wherever the reference of india is given that india should be replaced with the bharat okay so this is about it uh, however guys up till now much of details have not come in this particular direction so no need to go too much in detail in this particular development also okay then further moving on in this particular direction we have then city section riot demands action against senior official okay then we have these advertisements tenders etc that are there no need to go too much in detail in these particular articles for your exam point of view largely political developments have been there so directly we will skip and reach to editorial section and in editorial first article we have women marriage and labor market participation we'll take this particular article for exam then india must understand bhutan's reasoning so recently we have seen bhutan's prime minister uh, foreign minister bhutan's foreign minister has visited china okay so we'll see this particular development with respect to india implications on india unhealthy urban india must get into street fight mode we'll take this particular article for exam point of view then guys after that um, the legality of using white phosphorus we'll take this particular article also then guys uh, here we have one article balancing act a change is in the offering okay but challenges remain okay yes sir fine fine so basically the article is talking about the uh, now see recently poland's uh, political party justice party fine uh, basically the article is basically talking about the internals okay going on in poland developments going on i have read the article but for exam point of view article does not contains much of substance because when we talk about international developments those developments are important in which either india's foreign policy or india's international interest is involved but for india's specific point of view substance is not contained okay then uh, the issue in navigating bengaluru okay then guys uh, israel has an iron grip over gaza and west bank's economy okay so we have seen that recently what has happened as israel and palestine uh, israel and hamas issue is going on palestinian economy and palestinians essential supplies have impacted a lot okay uh, text and context section now in text and context section how big is the gender gap in arabic i will take this particular article but a very similar article like this is already in editorial section so we will club and we'll see both of these particular articles together then further moving on in this direction text and context second page across the river falgu to gaya and both gaya tapestry of spirituality and beauty so this is a bibliography article where they are talking about plots about this particular these particular books okay then further um, rahul interview satyapal malik asked him about pulwana adani uh, 
um, not much substance is given for examination guys in this then again we have largely the political articles etc new zealand latest to play india on order for expulsion of 41 canadian diplomats so this article also we have seen that where recently india demanded that 41 of the diplomats should leave india it is after justin trudeau the prime minister of canada has made substantial unsubstantiated allegations against india so in this particular capacity new zealand is also now criticizing india and basically guys what is happening what is happening it was said that it is the violation of vienna convention however we have discussed in detail vienna convention on saturday newspaper analysis already okay now one more thing i want to tell you guys you are not uh, needed to uh, trace what every country's statement has been made okay now why new zealand is criticizing because new zealand is a part of a 5i alliance now 5i alliance is an intelligence sharing system okay intelligence sharing alliance whose member is also canada as well as new zealand so because of that similar interest new zealand is giving these kind of a statements then assembly poll page uh, just skip it then uh, here we have one article isa to release report on global adoption of solar technology in november we'll take this particular article then uh, center approves the 22000 crore subsidy for key fertilizers okay then after that guys uh, moving on in this particular direction world page world leaders seek pause to fighting to allow aid in gaza now even recently uh, un aid has said this thing that they are running out of supplies okay and collaborative effort from all the world countries is needed so therefore even uh, even we have seen that un secretary general have also said recently that we need to come together and we need to provide humanitarian assistance okay so this is something uh, but no need to go too much in detail in this okay uh, Lebanon's Hezbollah holds talks with leaders of Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad. So again, it is in the constitution of Hamas Israel issue. Then after that, uh, pulses to bug rise in Kharif output. Okay, so production of pulses okay is expected to hit a three-year low. Okay, now in this particular capacity, guys, the price, the basically the price, the production, it is going to have an impact on India's food security. Then after that, uh, we have these corporate trends, etc. Then there is the sports page and in last let's see what article is there in today's science page so as we go in science page uh, one more thing i've told you that many number of a time science page is not there in a lot of printed edition uh, the the, uh, the geno data manipulation allegations and behavioral science sciences so recently allegations of fraud has been made against the behavioral science researcher at harvard so this entire controversy is being discussed but these controversies scandals scams all such kind of a thing fine of such kind of a nature is not relevant for our UPSC examination okay so i'll not advise you to go too much in detail in this article and this is all about the overview and now let's discuss all the relevant articles one by one in detail now uh, one more thing i would like to tell you that knowing the art of skimming newspaper and selecting relevant article for examination is half of the battle won for current affairs effective preparation okay now let's take these one by one in detail so i was telling you that you can download explainer notes of this session so you can download it and every class we start with a gs quotation okay so today we are going to take quotation from reynold neighbor okay so reynold neighbor says man's capacity for justice makes a democracy possible man's capacity for justice makes a democracy possible but man's inclination to injustice makes a democracy necessary. Now, man's capacity for justice, man can bring justice, man can strive for justice. And as man can strive for justice, democracy is possible where all the people will be given their due share, no preference will be given to one specific caste, one specific ethnicity, one specific religion. So, man, man has a capacity that man can build a system of justice. This makes a democracy. But what is a natural tendency of man? Natural tendency of man is to seek his own selfish interest. Natural tendency of man or nat natural inclination of man is towards injustice. In this particular capacity, even Hobbes, even Hobbes provided this particular thing that man is brutal, nasty, selfish creature. So even Hobbes provided that man basically is inclined towards injustice. It is his natural in it is his natural inclination is it clear or not even when people know justice it does not make them just 
here we have example of here we have example of duryodhan from the uh, mahabharat so duryodhan says to karna in mahabharat that i know just i know dharm but i cannot desist adharm i cannot desist adharm i am inclined towards adharm so man is inclined towards injustice adharm and because of that inclination democracy becomes even more important even more relevant you can use this particular idea in gs paper number 4 ethics as well as in gs paper number 2 you can use it okay now moving on in this particular direction and let's take first article for today isa to release report on global adoption of solar technology in november okay let's take this particular article first of all what is utility of this article this article will see with respect to gs paper number 3 environment environment as well as in gs paper number 2 multilateral groupings multilateral groupings will see this particular article so article is talking about isa isa stands for international solar alliance which is a brain child of india and france under international solar alliance basically countries between the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn countries between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn which have more than 200 days of sunlight they will leverage developing solar energy they will leverage developing solar energy solar plants solar photovoltaic cells will be developed and they will harness their energy through solar okay now what has happened under international solar alliance countries have decided to come out with the stock take report stock take report what is this stock take report let's understand this and then we will connect it with isa so what is a stock take report so idea of stock take report idea of stock take report was born in was born as a part of paris agreement it was born as the part of paris agreement that was signed in 2015 now basically paris agreement was signed in 2015 it is an agreement under unfccc that is united nation framework convention on climate change so all the countries who are signatories of unfccc they signed this paris agreement under paris agreement countries they adopted intended nationally determined contributions intended nationally determined contributions under which countries said that we will try to reduce our carbon emissions so that temperature that will rise should not rise beyond 2 degree celsius and if possible temperature rise should not be above 1.5 degree celsius so they will aim for 2 degree celsius but best case scenario is temperature should not rise above 1.5 degree celsius above the pre industrial level so for that carbon emissions are to be reduced india has also taken three indc goals now guys this is similar like this that suppose i am starting my preparation today and my goal is that within next 3 months i will complete all my basic textbooks polity history geography okay this is my target that within 3 months i will complete all my basic textbooks now let's say 15 days have happened since i started my preparation after 15 day i need to assess that where i am standing in my preparation is i am on the right track that will i be able to achieve my goals which i have taken for 3 months yes or no i will assess that okay this much i have done a situation i am right on the track b i am behind the track which is a problematic thing c that i am above my targets i am over achieving my target that is very good so i will take a stock take i will do a stock taking exercise that what was my goal and what is the state of my progress in the similar way since 2015 what happened the signatories of unfccc they come and they see what they have done in past and by that particular thing are they on a track to reach these particular targets or not so this global stock take is done now in this particular years cop conference of parties of the countries of unfccc this meeting will held in dubai this year and in that dubai meeting global stock take under paris agreement will be done where the countries will submit what they have done and by that what impact has come so this will happen so global stock take report is a part of the paris agreement fine i hope this background is clear now what has happened countries of international solar alliance they also got inspired by this global stake stock take exercise of paris and they said that we also need to do something like this so 
since the international solar alliance began now countries are going to assess that how much investment has been brought for developing solar energy whether that investment is sufficient should we need to do more or we are on to the track so for this particular thing so for this particular thing what has happened the countries of countries of international solar alliance fine which constitutes 116 member countries they have decided that they will take a that they will come out with the first they will come out with the first global solar stock take report first global solar stock take report so two things you need to understand global stock take report is mechanism under paris agreement under unfccc but another one is global solar stock take okay so if a question comes an exam you should not get confused solar stock take is not under paris solar stock take is under the isa international solar alliance okay so this is something that you need to understand okay i told you that it is inspired by global stock take of united nation conference of parties which will be held dubai this particular year so from here inspiration comes okay and what countries are going to do that also i have provided here now when we talk about guys a solar stock take understand this particular thing over the past few years massive investments in solar energy has been carried for example in 2020 in 2020 300 billion dollars of investment was done in solar energy in 2022 in 2022 380 billion dollar investment is done in the solar energy but there is a concern there is a problem problem is that majority of this investment is actually concentrated in few countries in large number of other countries there is virtually no or very less investment that is being done in solar energy for example if we talk about guys if we talk about guys uh, the solar photovoltaic install installations okay solar photovoltaic installations now you will get an idea here when we talk about the solar photovoltaic installations it has touched 1133 gigawatt in 2022 so 1133 gigawatt worth of solar energy potential has been added by 2022 but out of this out of this one fourth around 350 megawatt is installed in china only okay uh, uh, now 1133 is a total that has been deployed and 191 gw gigawatt was adopted in 2022 also okay should not get confused okay by 2022 what is the total solar photovoltaic cell solar energy potential that has been adopted 1133 in 2022 alone 191 gigawatt got adopted okay and out of that 350 megawatt 350 megawatt is installed in china only china is not a member of isa china is not a member of isa united state is other country which uh, another uh, another country okay and then india is the country with 62 megawatt uh, 62 gigawatt sorry so my point is that my point is that that is coming guys here is that few countries are the ones where majority of solar energy investments are coming what about africa what about west asia okay what about all these countries which actually are the countries which could leverage their investments are not happening so therefore this solar stock take will be done solar stock take will be done now what has happened india and france has also decided india and france has also decided that they are going to help in expanding solar installation in africa as well as in west asia and for this particular thing india and france are now about to launch global solar facility global solar facility now what is the global solar facility it will be a dedicated fund it will provide dedicated technical assistance so that in west asia latin america caribbean solar installations can be increased now under this global solar facility there will be three dedicated funds that will be there number one payment guarantee fund number two is insurance fund and number three is investment fund for technical assistance so these three funds will provide insurance in case a developer developed solar plant but is not able to recover cost insurance will be there fine fine then uh, investment fund is there for technical assistance and payment guarantee fund where some minimum payment guaranteed payment will be assured to the solar developer solar power plant deployers okay so this is something that india is going to do so largely two developments have come here and these particular developments you should write that and this can also be written in justification that how india 
is a global leader in in a renewable energy okay so this is something that you can you can write i hope guys that you have understood it okay okay there is one question sir how you know each and every articles background okay actually this kind of a, uh, comments they come many number of times let's just reply something on this sir how you know each and every articles background first of all um, i have been doing newspaper analysis every day on this platform since 2023 it is now more than three and a half years that we are doing it so some of it flows because of the compound compounding knowledge that have happened one thing and technically if i just tell you that from how many years i'm reading the hindu newspaper regularly it has been more than 11 years it has been more than 11 years and once you will also do the same thing you will have even more knowledge than what i am having one thing second thing second thing it is not that everything is stored in the brain every day before we stream this newspaper video we have to study for at least three four five hours this is the reason that some days newspaper timing get here and there also because we cannot stream the pre-recorded lessons every day from the scratch we have to start every day from the scratch we have to start some days there are certain issues which look like only four or five lines long but for them there is a long research that happens okay so that is all fine by which we are able to come out with the crisp explanations for all the articles and i am telling you one thing that guys many number of times what happened aspirants find for example when you will see me or when you will seeing some other teacher or anybody else you find that they have explained this concept very easily very lucidly and i am not able to understand why i was not able to understand there is some problem in me no there is no problem in you even even i many other teachers also and everyone they often sometimes find it very difficult to make sense of a lot of things because when an article has been published it is published in certain capacity okay and where their filler details are not there so that happens to everyone so you should not also feel insecure by that particular thing that is quite natural everybody has a pace of learning and i'm pretty sure that after one year or few months of dedicated uh, focus that you give on current affairs you will not even need me you will not need anybody else you yourself will develop basic grasp over all or most of these things okay so that is not something which is extraordinary you will also develop it in uh, in some time okay now there is this article warming ties okay india must understand bhutan's reasoning in Hindu's talks with china so guys if you remember we have seen this particular thing in overview in the yesterday's newspaper uh, what development has happened so recently bhutan's foreign minister has visited china okay and in this capacity there are some new developments that are coming let's understand this particular development this article we will see with respect to gs paper number two international affairs and within the developments in india's neighborhood we are going to see this particular article one thing secondly before going on in this article let's take some basic background information that is important for you to understand okay so let's take some basic background information okay so yes so here guys you can see map here you can see map and in this map here we have china here we have bhutan okay here there is nepal and here we have our great india now you see this particular thing that as we talk about Bhutan and China, so we find this particular thing that there is a long boundary stretch that is shared by China and Bhutan. And there are large number of boundary disputes that are there between China and Bhutan. And because of these boundary disputes, for long there have been the confrontations also between Bhutan and China. First of all, let's understand about the major boundary disputes that are there. So guys, when we talk about the major boundary disputes, a few important one just I want to tell you. Few important one just I want to tell you. So basically, so basically, here there is Doklam. Here there is Doklam. On Doklam, there was a standoff that happened in 2017, in which India came forward and helped Bhutan. And after Indian interventions, 
basically this particular dokla uh, crisis was resolved okay so there is this dokla okay then there is dramana and shakote okay so this dokla is there then dramana and shakote region here china claims it china claims it then there is there is this particular disputes also Teul Han Pajong, okay, and then Menchuma Valley. Menchuma Valley. These are the major areas where dispute is there between Bhutan and China. And guys, and guys, there is also one more, one more uh, latest thing that came in the news. That is the Sakting Wildlife Sanctuary. Sakting Wildlife Sanctuary. Now this Sakting Wildlife Sanctuary is in Bhutan. What happened? China, okay. Uh, basically, what happened for the Sakting Sanctuary? Bhutan requested some aid from UNDP, okay, UNDP, but China protested the deployment of the fund saying that this sanctuary comes in China, why Bhutan is asking, why Bhutan is asking, and this is a classic tactic that China has often deployed, for example, for example, for Arunachal Pradesh, whenever that leads from Arunachal Pradesh, they go to China for some kind of a tournament or anything, it gives them stapled visa. Which is a kind of an indication saying this particular thing that Arunachal Pradesh is actually the territory of China, which is completely baseless. So we see this particular thing that on Sakting, on this Sakting Wildlife Sanctuary, uh, and also the other areas where they have, there are large number of disputes between China as well as Bhutan. Okay. Now, basically, what has happened because of these particular disputes, because of these particular disputes, since 2016, since 2016. Bhutan and China diplomatic relations have been suspended. More than seven years have happened. Okay. Now, guys, when we talk about Bhutan, there is a very India's important strategic interest also, which lies between, uh, which lies uh, here. Let me explain you this thing. Let me explain you this particular thing. So basically, so basically, guys, you can see here chicken neck corridor. You can see here chicken neck corridor. So chicken neck corridor is that particular stretch fine which connects mainland India from Northeast India, which connects. So here we can see the chicken neck corridor. So this corridor, this corridor connects mainland India with the Northeast India. And from a very long period of time, China wants, China has this particular thing in mind that it wants to cut down India from the chicken neck corridor. And for this particular thing, what has happened, China over a period of time wants to develop their domination here, domination here. Now there, here there is a Doklam also that is situated. If you see here Doklam, if you see here Doklam, so Doklam is a situated. It is overlooking the Chicken Neck Corridor of India. It is overlooking Chicken Neck Corridor of India. Now point is that China wants to China wants to hold a, a dominant position here so that so that China can use this particular position strategically against India. Now. This is the reason that whenever Bhutan negotiates with China in independent capacity, India becomes a concern. India has been the one which is the major donor nation to Bhutan. Large number of aids have been given by India to Bhutan, economic secure uh, on economic front, on social front, etc. And India always wants that Bhutan, whenever it will negotiate with China, it will keep in mind India's sensitivities. India's geostrategic sensitivities will be kept in mind. Now, this is always the concern. Now, what has happened in 2023? Seven years since diplomatic relations got suspended in 2016. Now, again, Bhutan and China have started to talk. And in this particular capacity, in this particular capacity, what is going to happen? India will have certain concerns. India will have certain concerns. Now, first of all, let's see what talks have happened. So, Bhutan's foreign minister visited China. And in this particular meeting, in this particular meeting, both the countries have said that they are signing out a cop they are signing a cooperation agreement a cooperation agreement which will deploy a new joint technical team what is this joint technical team this team will study boundary between bhutan and china and will demarcate boundary and will help to resolve boundary disputes between bhutan and china so for delimitation and demarcation of boundary between bhutan and china this special team will be established Moreover, moreover, what this particular meet has come out with, they also provide that both sides, Bhutan and China, they will soon establish diplomatic relations. They will soon establish diplomatic relations. They will conclude their boundary negotiation. 
they will conclude their boundary negotiation. Now, this is something, this is something which is quite natural that when Bhutan is negotiating with China, Bhutan first would have discussed this particular issue with India because India China has uh, India China has seen a rough patch of history. So there is no doubt, there is no doubt that Bhutan have take, taken up this particular matter with India. Okay, and I already told you that whenever Bhutan and China talks, find silly goody corridor, chicken neck corridor always becomes a concern. Now the question right now that comes here is that India, the question that comes here now is that India is not concerned that Bhutan is negotiating with China, but India is concerned that such negotiations should not go against India's interest. And that particular thing India can carry to Bhutan in a sensitive manner. Okay, so this is something that has come out of this entire development. As of now, nothing much more than this is there. Okay, now moving on to next article. Moving on to next article. Okay, so here we have this article. Uh, actually, I have plugged here two articles. Let me let me uh, reposition this particular article. Just give me one minute. Just give me one minute, guys. I will reposition this article. Guys, I hope that uh, the article that you have got, uh, that is correct and no problem is there. Okay. Okay guys, so I hope that uh, now the video is visible to all of you. Okay, I hope video is visible to all of you. Now let's start with this particular article. Uh, so here what we have done, we have actually clubbed two articles. Article 1 is women, marriage and labor market participation from editorial section and article 2 is how big is the gender gap in earning from text and context section. Both of these articles we are going to see with respect to social, uh, GS paper number two, social justice, social issue, and within that, women labor force participation rate and related issues. Women labor force participation rate and related issues will take this particular article. There is a possibility, there is a possibility that it can also come in GS paper number three. Okay, it can also come in GS paper number three. Now, moving on, and let's start with the basic discussion. But first of all, let me give you one basic background which you need to have in your mind. See, recently, Nobel Prize for Economic Sciences was given to Claudia Golden. Claudia Golden is a researcher from America who has researched in women and women's participation in labor market. And Claudia Golden has provided this particular thing that often because of the systemic issues that are there in labor market, women often either they don't get jobs or if they get jobs they don't get equal wages as compared with the man basically there are the wage disparities wage inequalities between men and women's wages that are concerned so on the because of this particular thing multiple articles have been published okay so we have clubbed both of these particular articles because a lot of information is similar so basically article provides this particular thing that when we see from the point of view of economy 
we find this particular thing that women usually don't participate in labor force as men are participating in labor force. First of all, social reasons are there for that. It is assumed that women's basic responsibilities are for domestic work. So therefore, women are assumed that they should not be participating in economic activities. Moreover, when women participate, always because of stereotypes and prejudices that are there in the minds of employer, women are paid less. And because of this particular thing, what happens? Women's intra and inter household bargaining power declines. A person's bargaining power is always related to one's economic well-being, economic power. And therefore, women's bargaining power gets always declined because economically their efforts are not valued. Now, I just told you, told you that recently Claudia Golden, Claudia Golden was awarded this year's Economic Nobel Prize because she has advanced the understanding of women's labor market, labor uh, market out. Now, when we talk about when we talk about Claudia Golden, Claudia Golden has focused that how technological, social and institutional factors determine inequalities between men and women in America. And this particular things apply to everywhere. According to Claudia Golden, she says this particular thing that women, A, they will not work in economic uh, job, job sector. A, they will not work in job sector. B, if they work in job sector, they will take up those particular type of jobs which give more flexibility even though they give less why they want more flexibility so that they can be on time in home okay so that they can take their domestic responsibilities also they want a flexible job because of that these flexible jobs are often less paying and because of that always economically women are behind than the male okay further further when we talk about guys in the context of india here i have given you the data from periodic labor force survey recent report latest report According to the periodic labor force surveys, latest 2023 report, they provide this particular thing that gender gap, when we talk about gender gap, it has increased for self-employed workers, self-employed workers, okay, while it has reduced for regular wage workers, regular wage workers. Now, it has been provided that when we talk about male regular wage workers, they earned 34% more than women in 2022, fine, okay, and this particular gap, uh, this particular gap has fallen to 24% in 2023. So, from 2019 to 2022, fine, male regular wage earners earned 34% more. Now they are earning just 24% more. So, gap inequality is coming down, inequality is reducing. Okay. Further, it, the article also provides this particular thing that when we talk about the number of hours, the number of hours, fine, for male and female, how many number of hours they are working. We find that gap in work hours is large in self-employed workers. Self-employed workers. Men work 50% more hours than women. Okay. And it is lowest for regular wage workers. Okay. So self-employed workers, men are working more, women are working less. Now, question which should come to your mind. Why women are working less? Women are not working less because they don't want to work. They are working less because they cannot work given their domestic responsibilities and because they cannot work they are getting less wages and therefore wage inequality come wage inequality come okay now, article provides this particular thing that according to world bank data for 2022 worldwide labor force participation rate for women is 47.3 percent in 2022 this is worldwide okay and it also says this particular shows this particular thing that female labor force participation rate between 1990 to 2022 has actually decreased from 28% to 24% on an average. More women were working in 1990. And this is true also. Why it is true? And this particular thing has also been explained by the Claudia Golden through the U-shaped pattern. Through the U-shaped pattern. Let me explain you what is this U-shaped pattern curve. Okay, let's understand this particular thing. So basically, according to the U-shaped hypothesis, According to U shape hypothesis, female labor force participation rate, economic growth, female labor force participation rate versus economic growth versus economic growth. So, 
we find this particular thing that as economic growth will come economic growth will come female labor force participation rate will decline female labor force participation rate will decline and after a particular point the female labor force participation rate will start to increase this is called as the u shaped hypothesis now you need to understand that why it will decline so basically guys when a country is not having much of economic growth when the country is underdeveloped when country is underdeveloped large section of society is working in agriculture agriculture gives a lot of flexibility women can work whenever they want after their domestic responsibilities are completed so therefore large number of women are actually the part of the labor force workforce moreover during this particular time economic compulsion also compels women to work if women will not work their economic sustainability will not be possible so women will work however what will happen as growth will come as growth will come from agriculture sector we start to move towards manufacturing sector towards manufacturing sector industry becomes an important player in economy now what will happen as industrialization will come manufacturing sector will become important that flexibility will not be given in industry you have to give 10 hours 8 hours you cannot come in between moreover what is happening as we are moving away from agriculture to manufacturing sector economic prosperity will come and as economic prosperity comes male justifies that now women need not to work they can just stay home and because of flexibility that is not there women also withdraw so what happened women start in withdrawing and female labor force participation rate decline female labor force participation rate decline but after a particular level what will happen after a particular level again female labor force participation rate will increase why because after a particular point service sector will emerge service sector will emerge now service sector needs more laborers needs more workers and only men can not pull the fulfill the labor shortages so women will come service sector will give more opportunities also and what will happen over a period of time mindset will change mindset will change women will get educated women will get skill development and women are also ready to join the workforce okay so this is something that we see so if you see in context of india guys what article is saying that in 1990 article is saying that in 1990 india's female labor force participation rate was high now it has reduced from 28% to 24% so in the context of india also this has played an important role okay now guys i just want to tell you here that as middle class has increased in india middle class incomes have increased in india they have asked women now not to work because there is a lot of social stigma against women working okay this is this is something that is there this is something that is there now moving on guys in this particular direction so i have explained you this u shaped pattern now after marriage after marriage after marriage we see that there is a huge tendency for women's labor force participation rate to decrease why because after marriage there will be pregnancy that will come child rearing rearing of the elders in the home domestic responsibilities they increase so because of that particular thing labor force participation rate decreases moreover often women they have limited education attainment they have less mobility family obligation prevented them family obligation is prevented them moreover guys understand this thing employability of women is not similar for all type of women particularly women who from who are from lower caste particularly women who are from minority religion or women who are from conservative family <clears throat> on them there are even more obligations that are there on them there are even more obligations that are there okay also guys we see this particular thing also guys we see this particular thing that women they also encounter gender asymmetrical professional cost is it clear or not fine now understand this particular thing owing to the gender owing to the gender often women will not be desirable women will not be desirable particularly guys if i just give you one example young women who are in the age of getting married they their desirability is less compared to the younger men why because there is an assumption that women will take frequent breaks women will take frequent breaks so there is gender asymmetrical professional cost also which women have to fear then after that moving on in this particular capacity we find this particular thing guys that in 22 20 22 there is a decrease of 5% in the female labor force participation rate among the married women between the age of 25 to 49 fine so this data why because already i have told you the point that when the women 
will get married their labor force participation it will decline and in india it has happened 5% decline 5% decline has happened okay now in this capacity certain steps are needed to be taken what steps are needed to be taken there needs to be there needs to be the day care services day care services so that women who are mothers they are not disincentivized from joining the job now in india we have national creche service national creche scheme for the children of working mother but implementation of the scheme has not been proper because of this particular thing working mothers they have to withdraw from the workforce they have to withdraw from the workforce so the day care services can actually enhance the female labor force participation rate so it is very much important that we need to apply it adequate funding and adequate implementation of this particular of this particular scheme needs to happen needs to happen okay now uh, in this particular capacity uh, guys i hope that you have understood it okay moving on now here we have an article unhealthy urban india must get into street fight mode unhealthy urban india might get in street fight mode now this particular article will see with respect to gs paper number 2 gs paper number 2 health gs paper number 2 health and gs paper number 1 urbanization and problem urbanization and problem urbanization and problem okay now article says this particular thing guys that when we talk about india's urban population india's urban population is growing rapidly okay as per niti ayog by 2030 41% of India's population will live in urban India. And if we talk about the numbers, it is estimated. Okay, if we talk in terms of numbers, it is estimated that India's urban population will reach 675 million by 2030. This will be the second highest urban population in the entire world. Now, if you see, we find this particular thing that the cities of India they are responsible for they are responsible for india's rapid rise to economic superpower status cities are the one which are fueling huge proportion of gdp cities are the ones which are the manufacturing hubs which are the service sector hubs but at the same time our cities are unsustainable cities also are leading to large number of health environmental problems also now further if we see guys in cities we find that urban population they faces multi urban population they face hazards on multiple levels what hazards they are facing number one we find this particular thing that there is uh, air and noise pollution concern that are there in cities limited green spaces are there lack of access to sidewalks and parks is there okay we find this particular thing that recreational places are not there limited now all these particular things lack of accessibility lack of sidewalk lack of public parks what they do they limit the active lifestyle people they go in sedentary lifestyles okay obsolete modes of transportation are there still there are obsolete mode of transportation diesel gas gushing public transportation is there which is leading to pollution fine urban city dwellers they are getting exposed to unhealthy foods Ex uh, they are getting exposed to toxic chemicals toxic environment all these are the huge problems all these are the huge problems for urban city dwellers urban city dwellers because of this particular thing health risks such as heart disease okay diabetes many of the non communicable disease they plague people now article provides this particular thing that there are actually there are actually seven key physical provisioning system there are seven components which are crucial for healthy lifestyle of people number 1 number 1 food number two energy number three mobility transportation number four housing green infrastructure water and waste management if at these seven levels we bring an improvement then the health of people well-being of people could be enhanced fine number one food the type of food that you are eating whether the food that you are eating is organic or whether the food is laden with a lot of fertilizer lot of adulterants okay then energy okay energy that is being used for example energy that is being used for cooking the cooking the food main number of times guys we see that in villages okay people are not using the clean cooking fuels they are using wood they are using cow dung and this is not only the problem of rural but even in urban india 
that is a problem and every year nearly 5 lakh people they develop respiratory diseases and many of them die because of using unclean cooking fuel so if all these seven factors we work we can improve the quality of life for the urban city dwellers now article says this particular thing that we need to ensure that new development new developmental narrative for urban areas is to be built and as we talk, talk about urban development we need to focus that policy for urban development should take in account united nations sustainable developmental goals 17 goals that are there should take in account new urban agenda health in all policies approach it should be there now what we need to do we need to make targeted investment in certain area number one investment is needed to be made in clean energy and electric mobility so that pollution problem air pollution problem air quality problem that is remaining in it could be resolved moreover moreover by this particular thing we can also meet india's climate goals goals that we have taken as a part of the paris agreement second second we need to develop infrastructure which provides opportunity for physical exercise physical mobility now when we talk about exercise it not only help in burning the excess calories but it also promotes healthy weight loss reduces the risk of diabetes it works against heart diseases if adequate physical activities are there so therefore walking walking biking okay this is this should be this, this should be made possible right now walking biking is not possible on indian roads a there are no pavements b if pavements are there they are encroached by uh, they are encroached by sometimes roadside dwellers or they are encroached by a lot of undesirable things that are there so we need to sometimes vehicles are parked on that sometimes street hawkers are there sometimes waste products uh, waste garbage is lying there so we need to reclaim these walk uh, the, uh, these things second thing is that we need to focus on clean energy we need to focus on clean energy okay in this capacity bringing electric cars bringing electric transportation active transportation walking for path bicycles bicycles will play an important role then secondly then secondly the food food that are that, that are being consumed we need to promote the consumption of fresh fruits green uh, green leafy vegetables now fresh fruits vegetables it limits sugars fine and also it helps in reducing the type 2 diabetes type 2 diabetes so all these particular things are needed to be done so by focusing on health by focusing on environment mobility by focusing on developing healthy habits in individuals on multiple fronts find health concern that has been there in india could be reduced so that is all about it. then guys moving on to the next article now here we have this article the legality of using white phosphorus legality of using white phosphorus now first of all what uh, where this article is going to be used we'll see this particular article in gs paper number 4 ethics ethics of war gs paper number 4 ethics of war now first of all let me give you some background so as we have seen recently hamas attacked on israel and in response israel has again started attack on palestinian territory and during this particular attack there are some reports that have come out and these reports said that white phosphorus attacks have been made by israel on palestine initially initially it was refused by israeli authorities that we have not used white phosphorus but it has actually been seen in past that multiple occasions white phosphorus has been used in israel for example in 2008-9 Gaza War 2, in 2008-9 Gaza War, white phosphorus was used by the Israeli agency. Even during that particular time, they said that we have not used the white phosphorus in 2008-9. But later they, later they acknowledged that they did use white phosphorus in 2009. But they said that they used it in inhabitable areas. Now, what is white phosphorus? Basically, guys, uh, if I just show you, So you can see here white phosphorus attack, white phosphorus attack. So basically here you can see that when you see this white phosphorus attack, number one, it will emit a large, a lot of smoke. It will emit a lot of smoke. Now this white phosphorus attack is sometimes is carried for ensuring the military maneuvers. For example, for example, soldiers have to move from X place to Y place. For that, 
there will be a smoke that will be created by the white phosphorus. Now, this particular smoke is harmful, hazardous to the people. Now, you see this particular thing that this white phosphorus, fine, you see, you see, these chunks of white phosphorus, they have a particular quality. They have a When we talk about white phosphorus, just a minute. When we talk about white phosphorus, white phosphorus is incendiary weapon. Incendiary weapon. What is meaning of incendiary weapon? Incendiary weapon is that weapon which will ignite fire or which will burn. Which will ignite fire or which will burn. So you might have burned plastic in your childhood. When you burn plastic, what happens? Plastic falls like drops. Plastic falls like drops. And if that burning drop falls on your skin, you get burned. In same way, when white phosphorus attack is made, there are burning air drops, uh, burning drops that they, uh, there are burning drops. And wherever these particular drops land, they burn that particular area. And in this way, many number of times, humans, animals, they develop severe burns, burn marks when they come in the crossfire of white phosphorus. This white phosphorus is called as the incendiary weapon and it has been used by Israel also in this in this uh, war against the Hamas. Now, it has been said that when we talk about white phosphorus, it poses environmental danger also because I told you that when it will be used, it will emit a lot of smoke which is not good for environment. Okay. Moreover, it has also been provided that when we talk about white phosphorus, white phosphorus, White phosphorus cannot be used in populated areas. It cannot be used in populated areas because it can lead to severe burns and severe suffering. There is a convention on certain conventional weapons. There is convention on certain conventional weapons and it restricts use of incendiary weapon such as white phosphorus. And it has been provided that white phosphorus should be used subject to rules and principles of international humanitarian law. And it has been said that in no capacity it can be used against civilian people. Principle of distinction should be followed. Fine, it can never be used against the civilian population. But in this particular war, it has been seen that it has been used. Now, there is the convention on, there is also the chemical weapon convention. Chemical weapon convention, which limits the use of the chemical weapons. Now, this particular treaty, this particular treaty imposes comprehensive ban on chemical weapons. White phosphorus, white phosphorus is not covered under chemical weapon convention. Keep this particular thing in your mind. In prelims, if a question comes, is white phosphorus, which was in news, covered under convention on uh, chemical weapon convention? No, it is not covered. It is covered under convention on certain chemical weapon. Okay, convention on certain chemical weapon. Okay, now article says this particular thing that the countries need to come forward and need to ensure this particular thing that such kind of munitions are not being used because often they disproportionately impact civilian population and it goes against the ethics of war okay this is about all this is all about this particular article i hope guys that you have understood understood okay now moving on and let's take the main practice question for today so main practice question for today a diminished level of women's labor force participation rate has significant consequence on the overall economic progress of the nation. Discuss the persisting inequalities that exist in contemporary world. So for GS paper number 2, GS paper number 2, women related issues, we are going to see this. So that is all guys about it. And with this, we come to an end to the today's session. Guys, I hope that you have understood. So that is all about today. Now we'll meet tomorrow. Till then, please take care of yourself. Thank you so much.